Oh yeah, today is one of those what we call big boy math days. This is five, one, two, three, four, five. But interestingly, this is also five, it's three plus two. These are called partitions of five. A partition of a positive integer n is a way of splitting n up into positive integers. Again, that's called a partition. There are, of course, other partitions of five. We looked at five itself. There's also three plus two. There is, of course, also two plus two plus one. We can express these partitions using just parentheses. For example, um, this partition of 5 is expressed as 2, 2, 1. We don't regard the order as important here. Of course, 2, 2, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 1, 2. These are really the same. So we don't care about order, but uh, that's one way to express the partition. We already looked at the partition that's just 5, and we also looked at the partition 3, 2. I've just been tossing these blocks around, but in fact, if we use the blocks to represent a partition in a particular, more orderly way, like this, where we have the larger parts on top and the smaller parts on bottom, which would look like this in the case of 2, 2, 1, or would look like this in the case of 3, 2. This is a three-dimensional way of representing what's called a Ferrer diagram for a partition. A Ferrer diagram is just made up of these squares that represents the partition. So in this case, the corresponding Ferrer diagram, you know, written on paper, would look roughly like that. Again, that's called a Ferrer diagram, and these are actually quite useful. I mean, as is often the case in mathematics, when you can get a visual way of representing something, be it a function with graphs or a partition with blocks or little square diagrams, you actually get a much easier way of learning a lot about the thing in question. And there are some interesting results about partitions that can be proven at a glance just by considering the Ferrer diagrams. Now, technically, these are called Young diagrams. Ferrer diagrams are like the same thing, but made with dots instead of squares, but a lot of texts just use them interchangeably. We're just gonna go ahead and call them Ferrer diagrams. Finishing our discussion with five, the only partitions we didn't look at were four and one. That would be the Ferrer diagram for that partition. And then of course, there's the partition that's just one, 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 one. That's a perfectly valid partition as well. There's also the partition two, one, 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 and the partition three, one, one, and I I think that's all of the partitions of five we've looked at now. Now, with these partitions, each of the positive integers, in this case, three, one, and one, is called a part of the partition. Here's a quick question. Still considering partitions of five, how many ways are there to partition five into, at most, two parts? Well, let's see. We could have four and one. That's one partition into at most two parts. We could also have three and two, if I can build that real quick. That would be another partition into at most two parts. Those are the only partitions into exactly two parts, but we could also have a partition into a single part, which is of course the partition that just consists of five. So these would be all of the partitions into at most two parts. There are three of them total. A separate question would be how many ways can we partition five into parts of at most two? So before we were thinking at most two parts, at most two parts, you can't have more than two parts. But now we're saying uh, at most each part is two. You can't have a part that's more than two. How many ways are there to do that? Well, we could, of course, have the partition where every part is just one. One plus one plus one plus one plus one. Again, in this partition, every part is at most two. They're all less than or equal to two. Another option would be the partition that consists of two, two, and one. This is another partition where each part is at most two. And then there's also the partition that consists of two, and then three ones, two plus one plus one 
plus 1. So in fact, we see that there are three partitions of 5 into parts that are at most 2. That was the same as the number of ways that we could partition 5 into at most 2 parts, and that is not a coincidence. So these two numbers are equal, which we can easily justify with Ferrer diagrams. The number of partitions of a positive integer n into at most k parts, that's exactly the same as the number of partitions of that positive integer n into parts that are not larger than k, and it's really easy to see why this is true with the Ferrer diagrams. These are those partitions into parts that are at most two. I'm going to move those out of the way and bring back the partitions into at most two parts. We can actually take each partition into at most two parts and see that it corresponds directly to a partition into parts that are at most two simply by swapping the rows and columns. Looking at the first partition, if we take this row and make it a column, we've now taken the partition into a single part of five and turned it into a partition into five parts, each of size one. Then looking at this partition, we can take that first row and make it the first column. Take this second row and make it the second column. And now we've again got a partition into parts that are at most Two. We took the partition into two parts and changed it into a partition of parts that are at most two. And we can do it again here. Take this first row, make it the first column. Take the second row, make it the second column, and we see it corresponds directly to a partition into parts of size at most two. And so that's why these numbers are exactly the same. We see that they correspond directly. From one, we get the other. From the other, we could get the one. Now, this process of rotation that I'm doing, of swapping rows and columns, that's actually creating what we call conjugates. Let's write some of these down. If I have this partition, which is just five ones, that's one, 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 one. By taking this column and making it a row, and thus having a partition into a single part of five, this is a conjugate relationship. These are called conjugate partitions. As another example, if we took that partition into three and two, and you know, that looks like this, three, two, and then we do the rotation. So the first row becomes the first column. The second row becomes the second column. That now becomes this conjugate partition, two, two, one. Now, some partitions have a special property of being self-conjugates, which means that they are their own conjugate. Any partition like that has to have a sort of symmetry to it. Although I've described this conjugate thing as a sort of rotation, you can also view it as a reflection. And so, for a partition to be its own conjugate, and thus be self-conjugate, it has to be symmetric across its diagonal. So, for example, this would be a partition of six into these three parts. One part of size three, one part of size two, one part of size one. It's three plus two plus one, it's six. And this is a self-conjugate partition. Notice how it's symmetric across that diagonal. It has this beautiful symmetry to it. It is a self-conjugate. We could write it like this, three, two, one. And you can see how if we took this first column and made it the first row, it would just be that. If we took this second column and made it the second row, that uh, doesn't change anything. And if we took this third column and made it the third row, again, that doesn't change anything. So the conjugate would be the same thing, three, two, one. It is a self-conjugate. And there's actually something cool going on here too that the Ferrer diagrams help us justify. Continuing to think now about six, is it possible to partition six into distinct odd parts? The answer is yes, it's certainly possible. For example, we could partition six into five plus one. Now, the interesting fact is that the number of ways you can partition a number into distinct odd parts, like we have here, this is one way of doing it with six, that number is actually equal to the number of self-conjugates that the positive integer, in this case six, 
has. Let me say that one more time. The number of ways we can partition a positive integer into distinct odd parts, like this way of partitioning 6 into 5 plus 1, the number of ways you can do that is the same as the number of self-conjugate partitions that the number has. And the reason this is true becomes pretty evident when we look at the Ferrer diagrams. If we have a self-conjugate partition, which is going to have this nice symmetric shape, you can view it as being made out of these sort of L structures that look like that. In this partition, there's really just one of those L shapes, and then there's the sort of trivial single square L shape in the middle. But all of these L shapes are going to have to have an odd number of squares, because they have the corner, and then because of the symmetry that they need to have, if it's a self-conjugate partition, it needs to have this symmetry, uh, excluding that corner piece, there's going to be the same number of squares below it and to the right. Same number of squares below and to the right. Thus, the total number of squares in the L shape has to be odd. It's going to be this number plus that number, and since they're equal, that's going to be even. And then throw in the corner piece, and you're going to get an odd. And so basically, we can take that L and unfold it into an odd part. In this case, it unfolds into an odd part of size 5. And then this kind of trivial L unfolds into the odd part of size one, thus giving us a partition of six into odd parts that are distinct. Now, I just explained the gist of going from a self-conjugate partition to the distinct odd parts partition. Of course, we can also go the other way around. Let's build up a partition out of distinct odd parts. Say we have one, and then we have plus five, and then let's just say we have plus seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is going to be a partition into distinct odd parts of the number 13. Seven plus five plus one is 13. So this is a partition of 13 into distinct odd parts. And we can take this partition and find a self-conjugate partition of 13. They correspond directly. There's the same number of these things. The way you do it is take each odd part and fold it into this L structure. So we can take this odd part and fold it and take this odd part and fold it. And uh, whoops, I, I kind of busted that folding. Let me try that again, fold it. And then just tuck it in there nice and snug. And then a sort of trivial folding with this single corner piece. And there you go. This is now a symmetric or self-conjugate partition of 13. If we swap this row with the first column, nothing would change. Swap the second row with the second column, nothing would change. Swap the third row with the third column, nothing would change. Fourth row, fourth column, it's all the same. It's a self-conjugate. Now we began this partition of 13 as one plus five plus seven. I deliberately skipped three because if you have a sum of consecutive odd integers starting with one, you actually get a perfect square, which just makes for a weird example. Notice how this is one plus three plus five plus seven. These Ferrer diagrams are absolutely terrifying. One pretty obvious question with partitions is how many partitions does a particular positive integer have? That question, depending on how much you know about this stuff, is actually surprisingly complicated. And if you're interested, maybe we can do some videos talking about that. But we'll leave it there for now. That's a little bit about partitions and Ferrer diagrams. I think I'm going to pass the rest of my afternoon playing with these fun little blocks. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet. From my fate, twisting to escape this. Piling on my, my, my wrist if you can break it. Breaking in my past, I'm making it up fast. So slow down, give me the time so I can fake it. Grace the tune of words and just how I say shit. And let me speak my poetry to your face. It's not in the mid if you ain't listening. Not infinite if you ain't really in it.